Hi guys, so today I'm going to be revealing to you guys my top 10 beauty hacks. So these are going to be some things that I kind of learned on my own or things that I've heard, but things that I sat there when I heard them like, oh my god, why was I not doing that before? So whether it's some things with makeup, with hair, with whatever it is, I was like shocked that I didn't already know these things. And believe me, if you don't, it's totally cool. I had no idea some of these things like even existed and so I'm gonna be sharing them with you guys today so yeah. The first one that I'm gonna share with you guys is a concealer hack. So if you guys are like me I pretty much don't go a day without concealer whether or not I do wear makeup I always put a little bit concealer on. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration I'm gonna use my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and it is in the color Light 2 Vanilla. This will just be more dramatic so you guys can see what I'm actually talking about. So for concealer, I actually had no idea about this. How you're actually supposed to apply concealer. Look at my hair is still up and I'm still touching it. These are going to be two of my beauty hacks. Um, and they're both about concealer. The first one is you're going to actually put it under your eye. But what most people don't know is the correct way to actually apply concealer is actually in a triangle shape underneath your eye but also a little bit down under your cheek. This helps to overall brighten your face and give more lift to that area and completely cover it. So I'm going to use this concealer and I'm going to show you guys that. And the other hack is when you put concealer on underneath your eye, the instinct is really just to rub it in like or smudge it underneath your eyes and I use my ring fingers because it's a soft, um, it's your softest tissue. So I usually just go put it under my eyes and I'm rubbing it in like crazy. Actually if you want your concealer to last throughout the entire day and actually maximize the coverage which is what concealer is used for, you're actually supposed to use your fingers delicately and actually tap your concealer until it's completely mixed in. So although it takes a little bit longer and because you're going quickly before school or something like that, although your instinct is to smudge it, really it makes such a difference if you take the extra like minute that it takes to just completely rub it in. So I'm going to show you that first. I'm going to get closer to you guys for a minute. Sorry, I'm not liking my hair today. I'm having a rough hair day. So I didn't put that much concealer on and as you can see as I get closer, I didn't sleep very well last night. I was up way too late watching TV. But anyway, <laughs> so all I'm going to do is dab a couple here in my eye. And I'm going to put on a lot just for the purpose of you guys. Okay, so I didn't re-dip this in. So that was how much is just on the brush. It's a lot. So this is going to be too much, but like I said, it's just going to be for the purpose of you guys to see it. Yeah, it is really annoying to have to sit here and tap. So you guys can obviously see the difference. Um, it's very bright. So like I said, I use very little of this. I would not use that much, but that was just for the purpose of you guys being able to see it. I found it's a real difference when you're up close and you actually see it for the first time on your own eyes, what a difference it makes when you actually sit there and tap it in. And like I said, do that like little triangle shape. So this one I'm not going to show you guys. It's a pretty basic thing. So I just found this out and I can't tell you how long I've been doing this the wrong way. But after I curl my hair and you want the curls to stay and so your instinct is to get your hairspray and spray it right away. But what you're actually supposed to do is keep them coiled up so the heat locks in like the coil. So what I do is when I do my hair, I always did that, but my instinct was always to put hairspray on as soon as I let the iron go. So as soon as I saw the curl, I'm like, oh my God, spray, keep it, keep it or whatever. And what you're actually supposed to do is wait until it completely dries. So I had no idea, but it makes such a difference. My curls last 10 times longer than they ever did. So when the hair was just curled and the hair is really hot, and then you're spraying all that hairspray onto it, it actually weighs the curl down because it's cooling. So what you're supposed to do is coil the curl up, keep it all together, wait till it cools, let the curl out, and then spray it. So although that kind of stinks, and again, it takes a little bit longer, you know, you just kind of want to curl and then just go, 
um, it is really worth the extra time. I found it's a huge difference. So this one is pretty basic. Um, but again, I didn't know this for a very long time, so I'm just gonna share it with you guys. So the bobby pin. This little, little thing that we all know and love. These can be a pain in the butt, especially getting them to stick in your hair. So this hack is as simple as flipping over the bobby pin. So I don't know if you guys were like me, for as long as I've used bobby pins, my instinct was to grab it this way with the little curve facing up, and then I would just grab it and I would stick it in my hair, which made absolutely no sense. And then I saw somebody said, oh my God, you're not supposed to do it that way. I think I had my friend over and she's like, oh my God, you've been doing that? It doesn't, it makes sense to flip it around because this part will actually get hooked in your hair and the little like divots on the bottom of the bobby pin will actually stick in your hair. And when you connect two bobby pins, they interlock on those little um, divots and they stay in your hair. Oh my gosh, my mind was blown with that one. I literally had no idea that you'd just flip over the bobby pin. So again, that one's pretty basic, but still good to know if you don't know. Okay, another one that I don't need to show you guys and won't because I need to get my nails done. When you get your nails done, well, they don't do it when you get your nails done. If you're doing your nails yourself at home, you can actually put your nails in ice water. And although that'll kind of suck and be pretty cold, your nails will dry so much quicker. And that's the most annoying thing about doing my nails at home. Cause again, I'm in a rush. I'm trying to get my nails done, I'm trying to blow on them, trying to fan them, do whatever I can. And then I figured out, well, I didn't figure it out. Can't give myself that credit. Other people figured it out. And then I found out that all it takes is putting your hands in cold water and then you lift your nails out and they're like dry like 10 times faster it's crazy so the next one is creating the perfect cat eye so I'm sure this is something that most of you may have googled creating the perfect 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 cat eye I didn't even realize is as simple as putting tape on your eyes it is so simple so I'm not gonna do it right now just because Cat eyes do take me a while. I will probably do a specific video on it, but I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about for the tape. So all you do is you take a little piece of tape. This one's pretty clear. It's hard to even see it. So all you do is figure out where you want it. I usually line it up um, with my lower lash and then you just stick it on there. And then you take your liquid liner and just run it over and then you peel it off and boom. Again, how many years I've been trying to do a cat eye and it was that simple to do it. It's still kind of hard for me because it's still kind of like you do have to get that angle right with the actual tape. So another one that people don't really know about is actually using a lash curler. So if using fake lashes aren't your thing, there's a lot of great ways to actually improve your lashes without even using the fake lashes. One of them is for the lash curler, you think about your regular hair on your head, it responds to heat. So whether you straighten it or you curl it, it will change shape in the way that you want it to based on the heat. So all you do is take your regular lash curler and then you take your hair dryer and just blow it onto it so it warms it up a little bit and then make sure like right after because it cools down pretty quickly, you clamp it on your eye. It's not like it's gonna be hot or hurt your eye or anything like that. I mean, be careful. Lash curlers can be a little dangerous <laughs> if you're not careful, but it makes such a difference. It literally curls your eyelash because when you're pressing down, it's just like applying a curler to your actual hair. Well, well, I mean, your eyelashes are your actual hair, but you know what I mean? Oh, like you guys can even answer me. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean, guys? Come on. Another way that you can help improve your lashes for length, this is such an amazing hack. I can't even believe that I didn't know about this before. Like all the ones that I've said before, this one is amazing. So all this is, is something as simple as after you've curled your lashes and you're applying mascara, you apply a coat of mascara and then you actually apply something else while it's drying. You can apply the two things that I've learned, you can apply baby powder. So you can take like a Q-tip and put a little baby powder on it. And then while your lashes are drying, just run it over your lashes. And because what that'll do is it'll just stick to it and then it'll dry. And it's like a lash extender without even using fake lashes. So then you take your mascara again and you coat it over that and when it dries they look so long it's crazy they look like fake lashes what i use actually is Too faced came out with this awesome mascara kit 
and I feel like it didn't get enough uh, credit for how amazing it actually is. It's the Too Faced Better Than False Lashes Mascara and it comes in a kit and this is the nylon lash extender that it comes with. Now I used the mascara a while ago but I still kept this, I didn't use all of it. So when you go in here, the little spoolie actually pulls out the little white nylon stuff. I know it's hard to see. This is what you use in between mascara applications. So this is basically the same thing. So you can even take like a cotton swab and just make sure that it gets stuck on there. I mean, be careful, don't get it in your eye. It won't hurt your eye, but it'll be uncomfortable if you get some in there. Baby powder works pretty well. I think I like the cotton better. I just think it really does the job of the uplift when you apply the second coat of mascara. So that's the one I would personally recommend, but I'm sure uh, the baby powder I've tried like once and that was pretty, w that worked really well too. And so my last two beauty hacks for you guys today are actually both for eyeliners. This is a really, really simple thing that makes a huge difference. So I actually have a specific eyeliner for this and all it is is applying a nude eyeliner in your waterline and in the inner corners of your eye. So I actually have the Tarte Inner Rim Liner. So it is this nude color. I'm gonna put it on my hand so you guys can see it. It's very bright, even though it doesn't look very bright. You can apply it all over your waterline, which really does make a difference. The color just simply brightens your eyes and it really draws the attention to your eyes. So even if you use different eyeshadows, this really does the job to pop your eyes. I was amazed at how well this worked and I looked up a lot of reviews about this. Some people said it worked for them, some people said it didn't. Um, this did really work for me. This was a great purchase in my opinion. Okay, and so my final beauty hack for you guys today, like I said, is another eyeliner tip. If you want kind of a dramatic eye look, but you don't want it so dramatic where it doesn't look very natural, if that makes sense, the best thing to do is if you want to apply a top liner and a bottom liner is to actually use black on the top and brown on the bottom. Using brown on the bottom will help to open up your eyes and it'll make them look bigger than by applying so much black. And with these colors, another thing to know is if you want to connect them, it's actually better not to connect the two lines. So if you're applying a top liner and a bottom liner, it's actually better to leave a tiny bit of space because by connecting them, it makes your eyes look very small. And obviously it's nice to have big eyes and nice shocking eyes in that way. So that's a really good thing to keep on mind. And also for those colors, if you wanna use a nude liner like the one that I just had, What's really good to do is after you actually apply the top liner, you should apply a line on top of that one of some sort of nude color because that'll help to put some space between the crease of your eyelid and your eye. So it'll make your eyes again look more open. So those are all re really, really great things to know. And like I said, guys, I just found out about most of these things and these have really, really changed the way that I put on makeup and I love them. I think they're awesome. So again, I just wanted to share these with you guys. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to my channel. And keep an eye out for my next video. Thanks for watching, guys.